We've got more detailed specifications on the Nikon Z8, more detailed photo specs. But what's really striking between the Nikon Z8 and the Z9 are not the number of differences, but the number of similarities. The differences are so minor that in most scenarios that we think you're better off getting the Nikon Z8. Which ones? Well, I've got the details coming up after this short break. But first, please do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter. But most importantly, please subscribe to this channel. It doesn't cost you anything, means an awful lot to me, but most importantly, it really does help this channel grow. And if you'll see, I'm just 600 subscribers away from that 40,000 mark. Nikon Rumors just released some more detailed photo specs related to the Nikon Z8 and compared them to the Nikon Z9. And what was really glaring about the differences here is that there weren't too many differences. Yes, it's going to have a different battery, longer battery life. It's going to be able to shoot for longer, have a better buffer and have different storage options. But other than maybe a handful of differences, these cameras are very similar. In fact, to call the Nikon Z8 a Mini Z9 really kind of understates how capable the Z8 is when compared to the Z9. In fact, looking at the specifications, it's easy to see that it's got the exact same sensor, that 45.7 megapixel full frame stacked sensor, backside illuminated that we find in the Nikon Z9. Now, one thing we haven't had confirmed yet is whether it's gonna have the exact same image processor, the x 7. And in terms of ISO range, between 64 and 25,600. But when it comes to file formats, we see that the Nikon Z8 has a capability that the Nikon Z9 doesn't. It's ability to shoot 10-bit HEAF images. The autofocus coverage points, exactly the same between the two cameras. And the AF detection range, also the same. But what we do see different in terms of subject detection is not in the people where it's tracking based on body, head, face, or animals, dog, cats, and birds, vehicles, cars, bikes, bicycles, trains, and airplanes, but it has a dedicated airplane mode. So if you're one of those guys that likes going out to air shows and shooting planes, this is very handy because what I find is when you're able to set it to a specific mode, it's gonna be far more accurate when you're shooting those types of subjects. There's no changes to the AF modes. There's no changes to the options when it comes to the AF speed and continuous shooting exactly the same. 20 frames per second lossless raw, 1.2 gigabytes per second, or you can shoot up to 120 frames per second in JPEG only at 11 megapixels. But one thing the specifications don't indicate is the type of buffer in the Nikon Z8 and how it differs to the Nikon Z9. And if I was a betting man, I would assume that the Nikon Z8 has a slightly slower buffer and a slightly smaller buffer. So if you're one of those people that needs to shoot high speed continuous as fast as you possibly can for as long as you possibly can, well then this is one of those scenarios where you'd wanna pick the Nikon Z9 over the Nikon Z8. And of course you get that longer battery life. Both cameras have the exact same IBIS. They have the exact same VR effect. But when it comes to battery life, as I just indicated, you're only getting about 275 shots SEPA rating versus 700 shots on the Nikon Z9. And of course that's based on shooting to the CF Express Type B card. Now there's a few things to unpack here. 275 shots SEPA rated, I think that's a real understatement here. I wouldn't be surprised if we see well over 700 shots on the Nikon Z8, just as we can see well over 700 shots on the Nikon Z9. But in terms of battery life, it's definitely not gonna be as long as the Nikon Z9 because it's got that bigger, that more, capa more capable battery with a larger capacity. But other things we're likely to see in these two cameras too is your shots, how many shots you can shoot continuous will depend of course again on the buffer, how fast it is versus the one in the Nikon Z9. And I think if it's all about shooting for as long as you can, as fast as you can, as continuously as you can, then again, the Nikon Z9 would be a better camera. But for everybody else, if you're more than happy at shooting 12 frames per second or 20 frames per second for a few seconds, I can't imagine that the Nikon Z8 is gonna be a problem for you, especially if you choose high-speed storage cards like Angel Birds AV Pro Mark II, uh, 660 gigabyte card, which has a maximum sustained write speed of, are you, are you ready for this? 1.48 gigabytes per second, pretty fast. But again, if you need those high speeds, then this will help you and it'll help you um, not fill up the buffer nearly as quickly on the Z8 and maybe enabling you to get that camera instead of the Nikon Z9. They both have the exact same shutter speed and neither one has a mechanical shutter. The Nikon Z8 does get a couple of computational capabilities that we don't see in the Nikon Z9. One of them being portrait impression balance and skin softening. It is possible that we could see these capabilities come to the Nikon Z9 in a firmware update. It just really depends on if there's any sort of hardware in this camera that makes it possible. And I suspect that it's mostly all software. After all, both cameras have the exact same sensor 
as well we believe to be the exact same image processor as well. And as you can see here, there's an awful lot of similarities between these two cameras. I'm not going to go into all the details, but you can see some of the differences when it comes to USB and LAN terminal connections. And also that synchro terminal is not available on the Nikon Z8. But as far as the LCD and the EVF, the Nikon Z8 has the exact same LCD and the exact same EVF as the Nikon Z9. They both have that same warm display colors, the same button illumination, sensor shield. Both cameras have the exact same viewfinder refresh rate of 120 and 60 frames per second. But as you can see here, clearly the difference in the storage cards is CF Express Type B and a single UHS-2 SD card. But as we've already stated earlier on, we can see differences in the storage between having dual CF Express Type B cards and the Z8 having just one of those with a UHS-2 SD card. There's also differences in the network and that voice memo mic, well, that's not available on the Z8. And in terms of weather sealing, the Nikon Z8 has the same sort of weather and dust resistance as the D850 rather than the Nikon Z9. However, this latest post by Nikon rumors didn't bother to mention any sort of video capabilities but thanks to previous leaks, we do have information on the video. Now, in terms of the resolution and refresh rate, the Nikon Z8 is capable of 8K, well, actually 8.3K up to 60 frames per second. That's shooting Nikon RAW. It can also do 8K, 24, 25, 30, 50, and 60 frames per second. Now, there's no mention of what it's capable of doing in 4K, but as this camera's aimed to compete against the Canon EOS R5, I think it's a pretty safe bet that it's going to do all the same frame rates, 4K, 24, 25, 30, 50, 60, 100, and 120 frames per second. And with that stacked BSI sensor, well, it's pretty safe to say that the rolling shutter is going to be improved and the detail is going to be better as well. Now, the Canon EOS R5, it does have 8K over sample 4K, but only in the basic frame rates of 24, 25, and 30, not 50 and 60, and certainly not 100 and 120. So that's one area where I think the Nikon Z8 could be better than the Canon EOS R5. Now, in terms of Full HD or HD, well, we don't have any specs there, but it's pretty safe to say that this camera will at least do 120, but I wouldn't be surprised if Nikon pushes that a little further to 150, 180, or even 240 frames per second. But there are a few caveats I want to point out here. We're making the assumption that these specifications, these leaked specifications are actually that. They're leaked specifications. They're coming from known and validated sources. And while Peter's done a really good job in the past, there is one thing here that sets up a bit of a red flag for me. And you know what that is? It's this image here. Here, let me help you out. Let's zoom into the moniker. Take a look around Nikon. Does anything seem a little bit, well, blurry? Especially to the top right or the bottom, or even around the word Nikon, in contrast to the top left, where we see things are a little bit more detailed. And now taking a look at the Z, we can see that things are a little bit too softened. It's almost as though somebody took the Nikon Z9 and did a lot of editing here. And also, to the left of the moniker, right here, again, we can see a lot of softening, a lot of smoothing. This has definitely been edited. Now let's move down to the left part of the lens. You see that? This is unlike the rest of the image. It's a pretty good job, but when you zoom in, you can tell that this is by far no leaked image. Yes, it's definitely a red flag, but it's not the first red flag that we've gotten from Nikon rumors on the leaked specifications of the Nikon Z8. If we recall, a couple of days ago, we got a leaked price in US dollars, and it didn't take much to zoom in and see that this is clearly a faked image. There's nothing here that indicates that this is coming from a real source. And then within just a couple of hours, Nikon rumors came out and said, yep, our bad, this one's definitely a fake. But then a few days later, we got leaked pricing from a European distributor, and once again, we got a leaked image showing the pricing that was once again in low resolution. And whenever we get leaked images or anything from pricing to details of the camera to brochures or anything like that, and the images are, well, low resolution, um, I consider it rather suspect. And remember that brochure that we had? That was suspect as well, and that turned out to be fake. So what we got to really kind of assess at this point here is how much of the information that we're getting leaked on the Nikon Z9 is real? How much are we getting punked? How close are the leaked specifications that we're seeing here from Nikon rumors will actually come close to what we see in the Nikon Z8 when it's announced on May the 10th at 8 o'clock in the morning? And that's the real big question. So a fake leaked brochure, a faked image, another faked image. So that pricing in euros from a distributor and anytime I get I see leaked images today using modern cameras, even a smartphone app, when we get leaked blurry images, 
I, I have to doubt it because those leaked blurry images have been edited in some way. And that tells me that if they've been edited, well, how much has been edited? Was it just a little bit to downsize them to make us wonder and guess at what it could be? Or is all the information fake? So if you want to stay up to date on all the news and rumors regarding the Nikon Z8, the latest leaked images, the latest leaked news, or the latest leaked pricing, or my analysis letting you know what I think in terms of these specifications and how accurate they are, well then go ahead and subscribe and choose all notifications. And by choosing all notifications, as soon as I publish a new video like this one here, well that way you can stay up to date on all the latest news and rumors. Just make sure you check your junk and spam mail folder because some of your notifications will come in there. And for all the minor news and rumors, all those stories that, well, they're not quite big enough to have their own separate video or pricing information, like a sale on the Nikon Z7, $400 off or $300 off on the Nikon Z6 Mark III, well then follow me on Twitter because I put all that information out there. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you again soon.